Hello and welcome to our webinar on navigating Bangladesh's entrepreneurial landscapes. I'm Julia Charlton, Chair of the Commonwealth Chamber of Commerce, and we have an exciting program lined up today, taking us from Bangladesh's aviation sector to its fast-growing digital startup landscape. Both industries are playing a key role in the country's economic growth and development. So let's start with aviation. As one of the fastest growing Commonwealth economies, Bangladesh has seen tremendous air traffic growth in recent years, projected to expand over 6% annually through 2023. Major projects like Padma Bridge are boosting connectivity. Leading the way is Farooq Ahmed, co-founder of Air Taxi Bangladesh. Farooq will share insights into this pioneering urban air mobility startup and emerging opportunities in aviation technologies. Farooq Ahmed is the co-founder of Air Taxi Bangladesh, a pioneering urban air mobility startup. With over five years of experience in the aviation industry, he's played a key role in Air Taxi's growth and success through his leadership and entrepreneurial vision. Prior to co-founding Air Taxi, Farooq served as the technical manager at Shodajaw Express Limited, where he demonstrated his versatility in managing technical operations um, and he's also undertaken extensive training in areas such as AI and aviation manager management. He's also a very good cricketer, I understand. And Farouk has a BSc in aviation management from GAU Cyprus and a diploma in engineering with a focus on aerospace from the Aeronautical Institute of Bangladesh. And his educational background reflects his dedication to achieving excellence across technical and aviation domains. So through his diverse professional experience, including sponsorships and training programs, Farouk has developed expertise in aviation, engineering, management, and emerging tech. He brings this well-rounded skill set to leading Air Taxi Bangladesh's mission of revolutionizing urban mobility in the country. So um, Farouk, over to you to hear all about Air Taxi. Hello, how are you everybody? Thanks for everyone. Uh, and also, ladies and gentlemen, I am Farooq Ahmed, is a Air Taxi co-founder. Air Taxi is a uh, aviation tech industry is a growing up almost new a journey like this. Uh, we are provide for Bangladesh is a taxi service is a transport system, but we are include also air transport system also. So we are develop day by day in here bangladesh also we are looking for too much problem is a, so as a road transport authorities like this is a traffic jam but we are try to the uh, solution also so we are provide also air taxi as a app development management also like a in infrastructure in uh, in here as a bangladesh and also for south asia we're looking for great opportunity so air taxi air taxi is a bangladesh uh, transport service we are uh, now servicing like a helicopter service but we are try develop for next day by day for uh, uh, energy electrical energy system also so uh, if you possible second slide please i show my th uh, things is a uh, why bangladesh is air taxi a uh, Air taxi is a, a growing for in here. Aviation also ICT we are contributed because Bangladesh is a opportunity is a employment section also. So uh, aviation and ICT and employment we are looking for three types. This is our mar uh, global market. Uh, last uh, uh, World Aviation Festival we see the air taxi is a global market two point one per billion. A dollars but we are day by day looking for a more investor looking comes to in here investment also developing in here is a growing market so but, but bangladesh is the one kind of problem uh, we are facing is that a uh, air taxi is a solution is a road transport authorities like a uh, is a problem find out and other things this is our Bangladeshi problem, huge traffic problem and road transport management problem. But uh, we are trying to the air transport division 
is a smoothly transportation system because our in here businessmen and also RNG sector uh, develop uh, last five and uh, ten years. So we are thinking is a one way to another way smoothly short time go in here to another here going also for smoothly take away for air taxi. So this is our find a problem also solution like this. Uh, this is solution for innovation, transport and logistics management. Uh, I show you my slides because you, if you see the innovation uh, now, Bangladesh is a digital Bangladesh. We are uh, talking about this and also grow, uh, next step is the smart Bangladesh. Our Bangladesh uh, Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina talk about we are uh, developed for the next step for the going smart Bangladesh. Is smart Bangladesh also going to the smart solution transport system also for innovation including transport system and logistic systems. So logistics systems uh, management we are developed day by day. So we are thinking like better for future and Bangladesh develop as a role model uh, next uh, next step. This is our revenue model because we are going to business like a, as a, a four things as an advertisement, sales department, booking site, and also B2, B2C. B2, B2C is a, we are looking for business to business to customer. Uh, our air taxi business model is now growing up. So we are tied to the develop for things as a business and another two business uh, businessmen and like customer. We are contribute the customer as an adoption for the air taxi like this. Now is market size. Market size we are show for you oh, like this and growing for the uh, 2024 20, uh, one like is the $4.5 billion. So we are uh, now growing business for the uh, our customer because uh, our country is like 170 million people still now so we are thinking is a going is the smart people adoption like as a customer and business traveler uh, like this uh, this is our our traction traction because uh, last uh, to, uh, 2020, we are starting this business as a air taxi helicopter service management. So uh, um, our uh, uh, service is a 1,000 plus, uh, all, already 600 data and more than 500 plus uh, registered customer. And we are also growing value generated for uh, like this. This is our founding member, uh, Our uh, also me as a Farooq Ahmed co-founder. I have experienced our, uh, uh, another founder is uh, Amaluna Rafi. He also uh, is jobbing uh, Beximco Aviation Limited. And this is the uh, future roadmap. Uh, our target is the uh, next 2025 is intercity connections and also space tourism. Bangladesh is a tourism management. We are developed there like this. And 2041 is smart Bangladesh. Our already Bangladesh government talk about this is a smart Bangladesh. Smart Bangladesh also think for the smart technology and also for smart transportation. Transportation is a also more in a networking and also communication for a, each people to another people and other side country. Also, this. Bangladesh is growing up for the next future and for employment side is too much good. So we are looking for this. We are looking for this like another journey as a air taxi system is a not a system is a, a entrepreneurship like uh, we are developed for the aviation industry as a mobile apps going to another for another where people connecting like this. Thank you so much. This is my business uh, pitch and also business model and also talk about share with you and other people. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Farouk. That was um, really interesting. So um, now let's turn to um, Bangladesh's digital landscape for SMEs and experts. And... Um, 
the country clearly has a thriving startup ecosystem that's disrupting various industries. And there is um, two co-founders set up a business which is disrupting this um, startup ecosystem. So hello, Beza, and two co-founders are Nena Naima and um, Shopnil Motifi Bila, who is the co-founder and CEO of Hello Beza, and he's with us today. So during his studies in finance, um, Shapnil acted in a leadership role to a community of SME entrepreneurs, and he crossed paths with Nena and they co-founded eBusiness Expert before conceptualizing Hello Beza as a platform. And this connects over a thousand SMEs and a hundred experts, which it's been doing since launch. And its mission is to significantly impact both through affordable quality digital services. And Nena and Sopnil um, have really worked with Hello Beza to revolutionize Bangladesh's digital landscape for SMEs in, in order to help them to connect with experts. So we look forward to hearing about the success in this growing sector. So thank you, Shapnil, for joining us today. And um, we're over to you for your insights. Thanks, Julia, for giving me the floor. And hello, everyone. I think hope you're doing well. Hi, this is Shapnil Motafi Villa, uh, co-founder and CEO of HelloVisor. HelloVisor actually business as a service model startup. And uh, do you know there are 10 million SME business entrepreneurs who are suffering from budget problem to get uh, standard quality digital business services. And also, on the other hand, there are around 6 lakh freelancer uh, digital business experts who are uh, suffering from not getting jobs regularly from international marketplace. And uh, it's interesting, right? Uh, there are, are 10 million SME entrepreneurs who need digital business services, and there are six lakh, only six lakh digital business experts who want to serve the SME entrepreneurs or who want to serve the digital business services. But there is no trust or the platform, uh, one step solution platform from them to connect them. So here we come uh, with our idea or solution, Hello Visor. It's a one step web based platform where SME entrepreneurs can access digital standard quality digital business services at budget friendly price for ensuring their business growth and freelancers can get uh, jobs regularly from here. Uh, for, uh, as a result of that, uh, SME entrepreneurs can save money and grow their business and uh, freelancers can make money by getting jobs regularly and ensure, can ensure their financial freedoms. And uh, overall impact is uh, the overall economic improvement of the Bangladesh. So uh, we, we propose some value. Uh, we propose the value of uh, standard quality digital business services within the SME entrepreneur's budget. So uh, here is the product part or uh, here is the uh, overview of our web application or web-based platform. Uh, there are mainly two parts, clients part and experts parts. From clients part, the clients or our SME entrepreneurs can search the service, select the required service and book the service and get delivery of the service from them. It's very user-friendly and easy to use. And the experts can uh, register here and can get jobs regularly. And there are some other internal systems to maintain that. And uh, uh, here you can see our total addressable market size. Uh, you know, there are 10, around 10 million SME entrepreneurs who need digital business services. And we assume that uh, they can uh, they will take on an average 100 US dollar of services. And uh, the total value of the service is $1 million, uh, uh, $1,000 million or $1 billion. That means our total addressable market size is $1 billion per year in Bangladesh. Uh, and the global market size is also very big. Uh, it's almost $193 billion. So uh, we, we have also validated our market from December 2022 to uh, November 2023, you can see uh, we have served 1,032 plus entrepreneurs through our business model, uh, through our platform Hello Visa, and we have also connected 100 plus experts in our platform. And our revenue model, our revenue stream is very simple. We simply serve our uh, we simply serve the SME entrepreneurs, and in exchange of that, we get the servicers as our revenue. And there is a hypothesis: if we uh, serve, if we can serve five lakh entrepreneurs and organizations, and uh, if uh, if they take a hundred dollar of services. Uh, and we will get uh, $50 million in a year as a revenue. So uh, you can see here the underlying magics 
uh, for uh, for for that for this musics or for this advantages we are based from uh, we are different from our competitors as there are uh, though there are no direct competitors of hello Visor, but uh, we you can see they our our services are very much affordable and uh, we provide best quality services to entrepreneurs and it's one step solution uh, in our platform and we provide customized solution and continuous support and yeah, the, our services are ease of access to get the services. So here you can see our core team are uh, from the right side, uh, she is Naima Sultana, founder and CEO. And she has the more than uh, six years of experience in the sector of uh, these digital business services. And this is me, Muttafi Villa, co-founder and CEO of Hello Visa. And I have more than seven years of experience in digital business services. And uh, uh, and the last one, uh, Mohammed Ibrahim Khalil, uh, he's our CEO and he has uh, 27, more than 27 years of experience in financing sector. So, uh, and uh, you can see the some numbers which represent the impacts on entrepreneurs and freelance experts. We have already served 1,032 plus SME entrepreneurs for our platform. And we have already connected 100 plus freelance experts to our platform. Thank you. That's all from us. Thank you very much, Shapnel. Well, thank you both of you very much. So I'd like to kick off by asking each of you, should we start with Farouk and then Shapnil, you chip in, as what inspired you in each of your own personal journeys to um, go this entrepreneurial route, which obviously is a much more difficult route, many would think, than just getting a job. For example, in aviation, there must be jobs in aviation, Farouk. You know, what made you go the entrepreneurial route? Thank you again. Uh, as an entrepreneur, I was... Uh, looking for is a how i different for my country and i was represent my country as a bangladeshi so aviation sector is a good sector as a, i study and my education background i see is a is a rich things but as an entrepreneurship how i smoothly employment grow up as a, in here so uh, I think is a tough job for me because is a choose things why I as an entrepreneur why what is my venture what I think as a business as a develop so we are going to the uh, main part with as a looking for the is a development as a employment development because in here is a too much uh, employment problem. And here is a job problem. So as a entrepreneur, I was a comes in here. So another people's also interested in here as an entrepreneurship, uh, as a working in here as an industrialist or other things. Our country is also a semi uh, sectors, but in here is a too much problem as a investment side, also market size and other things. So I was appreciated everybody and also for me because i was a, a try to the success for is a entrepreneur so is a is a tough job but as a not a tough you have a thing as mind and set up for everything you have to success for as an entrepreneur as a your venture and as your what your idea is because as an entrepreneur uh, looking for the idea basis is Idea basis. Idea is a good thing for the develop for the entrepreneur. So he also develop for as a business kind of model. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. So Shapnil, any personal inspirations? You know, when you were six, were you selling things at school or, you know, where did your entrepreneurial drive come from? Okay, uh, actually, my entrepreneur mindset starts when I was a graduate, uh, graduation post or undergrad student in University of Dhaka, Department of Finance. And as I was, uh, my first venture was, uh, it's, it was B-Book and uh, I was starting it for in education sector. And that was a book with video classes. And uh, that was a, for every page of that book. Uh, there were video classes uh, to, uh, as a student can learn easily from that book. That was my first venture. And after that, uh, back to 2019 or 2020, I was conducting, uh, me and our uh, founder, uh, Naina, was conducting a 
community of SME entrepreneurs uh, who are running business digitally and we are contacting that community to enrich the knowledge level of SME entrepreneurs to run their business digitally. Uh, uh, and from that point, we have uh, got the idea of Hello Bizarre and we realized that the SME entrepreneurs uh, need standard quality budget-friendly services badly but at uh, budget friendly price. So, and uh, there are approximately three to five lakh freelance experts on that sector. And interestingly, these experts are only dependent on the international marketplace to sell their services and they are not getting jobs regularly, but there are huge demand of their service among domestic SME entrepreneurs. And uh, you know, as there were no platform to connect these both groups, we realized that need and uh, came with the idea of Hello Wizard. Uh, now from here, SME entrepreneurs can get standard quality digital business services at budget friendly price and freelance digital business experts can get jobs regularly. By only connecting these two groups, their problem has been solved. Right, so I think when we were chatting, you told me that social media support is in big demand, right? Right, right. And what about other things? Do you need legal services, for example, accounting services? What else do people look for? Uh, yeah, they need uh, legal support. Uh, like uh, starting in a uh, starting a business in Bangladesh, it requires credit license or digital business identification numbers and other documents. So uh, they require that services. But uh, as uh, we provide one step solution, so we have connected the lawyers to our platform, business lawyers to our platform to provide these services. So a question for both of you, actually. Um, do you think the government provides enough support in Bangladesh? Because I got the impression the government is quite business friendly and does want to support um, uh, startups and so on in Bangladesh. How do you feel about that? Yeah, the so government basically is an idea basis startup not growing for interested because as a problem for funding, also for patron, also for uh, investment. So in here as an investment uh, and uh, as a businessman is an investment in here. So how much return back his investment is the main things. But now changing is the day by day is changing for in here as a Bangladeshi peoples uh, try to the new landscape for uh, is a globally as globally i i i it's my things because i i share it with you the government is a collaboration for the startup as a idea basis as a people's they are also good for a uh, in environmental uh, business 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 area yeah because you mentioned because, you know bangladesh 2040 and you know that's a great aspiration isn't it and, yeah, and yeah, there's a great expression because they are Try to the our youth generation develop in uh, 2041 uh, because youth is the main major uh, part of in here country is a uh, develop uh, as a uh, things for the developing country as Bangladesh. So government try to the now is a uh, developing as a uh, everything every sectors before is uh, some problems some issues a uh, whatever it but now the government is a uh, minus change they are uh, try to the develop. Uh, next uh, next uh, five years and next 10 years also i was talking about the 2041 uh, like this yeah yeah and i guess you know every country to be honest has issues funding startups this is not unique to bangladesh <laughs> you know, this yes, is financial problem <laughs> our, our country is a financial problem like some issues uh, we are things as a uh, imf uh, they are already bangladesh something as a uh, problem for the reserve issue and other money inflation issue for bank, banking sector, but it's changing. That's why our government not to interest the startup, but it's changing. But we are hope is a chance for the also for our developing things. So Shapnil, with your business model and your platform, you must have a lot of smaller payments being made. I think Farouk's business is probably more sort of certain larger payments for his helicopter services. How do you do that? Is that through a normal banking transfers or what's the most efficient way to make smaller payments shop, shop now? Uh, there, are, uh, there are automated payment system or payment gateway. They can pay okay. through the pay through that or they can also uh, pay through personally bank transfer or other mobile banking services. Which payment gateways? 
uh, there are some local payment gateway. So uh, it's like SSL commerce, should you pay, unique pay. Or... They're quite mm. efficient, are they, for payment? Uh, it's efficient locally. Locally, it's very much efficient. That's good because that, that really supports your business, doesn't it, I think? Yeah. Right. So do you find you get enough support from government? Do you use government agencies at all with to for the startups that you help or how does how would how does that interface work i think the bangladeshi government is uh, developing this sector or startup ecosystem day by day or uh, if i think about the situation of 2015 and uh, now it's 2023 uh, there's huge development on this sector there is huge development so uh, i think it, it is uh, developing day by day or uh, and the bangladeshi government already are uh, initiated a startup fund and other things. And there are a government company named Startup Bangladesh Limited uh, to support the startup of Bangladesh. And there are some other programs, uh, you know, in 2023, uh, uh, there happened a program named uh, Startup Summit Bangladesh. So uh, there are a lot of programs government take to uh, and initiated to uh, develop the startup ecosystem and help the entrepreneurs. Uh, but I think uh, it should be developed more and we need more support from the government to de uh, develop this sector of ecosystem or develop the startup ecosystem. Do you really think you need more support? Seems like quite a lot already. What do you? What else do you think they should do? Uh, I think uh, this, uh, this initiative has been spreading more and uh, we need uh, more support or uh, more frequent support from that. And there are some red tape problem uh, there are some great problems to take their services from this uh, initiative of the government. Yeah, so like I think governments and red reduced. tape everywhere tend to go together, <laughs> don't they? <laughs> it's just a bureaucratic problem. So I think it should be reduced. Right. So Farouk, you know, you you operate in a very regulated sector and rightly so, right? Helicopter traffic should be regulated. How do you find that? aspect of your business because it's probably quite challenging for a startup to deal with a lot of regulation yes obviously because bangladesh civil aviation is not first time permission because we are third party as a vendor support for the our country as a helicopter service because air taxi everybody knows for the electrical vertical system as an urban air mobility system but in here as a, i published and marketing last two years as a came back for my uh, Cypress to here. So last two years I was marketing uh, how we used the air transport system as a marketing policy, as a partnership policy, we are trying to the convincing. Then after uh, civil aviation regulatory, they are uh, interest in here, okay, we are fine. We are in service as a public transport system, as a transport system, also cargo system, and other logistic systems. Because they are try to the understand because it's easy to move to a, a, in here to another here public transport system like this. Because last two years we are convincing, convincing, convincing. Uh, because it's need to ask, uh, need because to our because we are is a everywhere is a, is a everybody knows for the time of value. Uh, because time of value is a time uh, maintenance. We are also uh, uh, need to uh, these things as a air taxi. So when you say it's available to the public, I guess it kind of is, but it's the elite public, isn't it, that can afford a helicopter? Helicopter is our country's uh, as a some company is a subsidiary because they are used for the gov uh, governing bodies. That's why is not for easy for public transport. So they are thinking is a, is not too easy for public sites. They are uh, showcasing for uh, is a interested for its commercial things. Is a commercially is a fuel aviation some like ride share modeling like mm -hmm. something is a, something is a, you you understand that is a develop so so the government uh, government is a not permission because our country is not uh, industrialist as a helicopter mate uh, we are provide for uh, usa for other countries as a uh, buy things so we are try to the as uh, this company 
you have give it to us for I, we are used to that as a commercially brings for passengers as a customer for ride sharing model. So I remember, for example, years ago, getting a helicopter landing in, um, I think, JFK Airport, New York, and getting a helicopter into Manhattan. So that's the sort of thing you would do. And it was like you, they just filled up this passenger helicopter that was waiting to take off. You know, right? we didn't even have to pre-book it. Are you going to be doing anything like that? Yes, uh, like that. Because our main passenger, helicopter passenger, uh, they are uh, foreign expertise because they came for uh, Bangladesh and go to early his village. Uh, they are already seven days, eight days before they are booking because I need my helicopter this time. Uh, I go for my country as my villagers, villages like everybody go for villages like as urban area, rural area. Because helicopter is uh, go to easy short time is a uh, five minutes, ten minutes like this. Uh, they are booking for the ten days, seven days ago. Right, right, right. So it's a funny story there because I think the client we were yes. going to visit when I was, um, well, I, I was very excited because I was very young when I did this trip. You know, arriving and getting a helicopter into Manhattan. I thought it was so cool, and I was with my boss at the time, and I didn't know that he was terrified of helicopters. And he was almost ill when we arrived in Manhattan. <laughs> you know, he had to recover. <laughs> Some people are very... It's an, it's a, it's a, it's a entertainment experience. Everybody <laughs> has a helicopter I, up. So, so he thinks as an entertainment-like experience. As a, like free fall everywhere. is a big sky. And my... As flying, flying things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some people react differently to helicopters, don't they? <laughs> So you told me that you'd had over a hundred bookings since you started. So you know where do you think you're going to be in the next couple of years in terms of bookings, and how are you promoting this business? This is book uh, I service a uh, hundred plus because this is service uh, hundred plus service. Uh, I was last two years as a marketing policy. Then I was servicing and also show for everybody and also government and also civil aviation companies as a vendor supply chains like this, because uh, we know for the, who is the main passenger. We find out the main passengers, like uh, I know for who is the main current passenger. So as per 600 data for me, I was know for last uh, two years, how can I service this? So, so that's why uh, we are, uh, is a new as a startup business as aviation and also for a startup and also transport system as a collaboration new things for the Bangladeshi peoples. So as, a, as he comes as like a, as a foreigners in here as an investor in here Dhaka to Chittagong as a port city land areas go for the swift time and go for uh, his back to his country. So is a short time as a as transport choose for the air taxi. That's why I marketing is the main priority and also branding because brand is a good things as a business model. As a branding is a good for a business collaboration. You see is another country, my our neighbor country is India, China, Japan. They are also now a yeah, taxi business as a new things role model. They are also innovation, uh, innovation transport system in including. So we are also try as a Bangladesh is a, everybody knows as a poor country, uh, but is not for poor because we are not for develop for education and another thing. So we are try to the develop this niche match is a cutting edge. So we are things is a right things now. We are develop also business model also for business including. Okay. Thank you very much. That's interesting. So, Shapnil, obviously, you're looking for a much wider, probably, you know, you, your platform has got almost no limits, really, as to how many people you could put on it, right? It won't be very constrained at all. You just need more startups and more experts. Um, how, are you, how are you growing that, um, you know, to actually, obviously, it's a good start, a thousand startups and over a hundred experts, but how are you planning to expand that? Okay, thank you. Uh, you know, uh, there are around 10 million. I, I previously mentioned there are around 10 million SME entrepreneurs in our country, I mean, only in Bangladesh. 
uh, but there are also 190 plus countries in the world. Globally, it's huge and the number is huge. So uh, I have no problem with uh, getting the startups or entrepreneurs, not startups. I uh, I think they are business owners. A startup is different thing. So uh, there, there is no there is no lackings or there is no uh, lackings of entrepreneur number of entrepreneurs but uh, there are limited number of freelance experts but i think globally it's uh, i think globally it's uh, enough enough for them to uh, serve the entrepreneur number of entrepreneurs and the experts so it's easy to grab them and uh, as they are looking for the jobs the experts are looking always for the jobs and international marketplaces or international marketplaces are not sufficient for them so they are connected uh, they are eagerly connected with us so in bangladesh in particular has got a very good supply of tech related um services right it's got an awful lot of home wo- people working long distance from home on tech related uh, matters. Uh, um, are you uh, using some of that talent for your platform? Right. Uh, they're they're working remotely or virtually. And mm. as a platform, actually, we connect both these parties, like SME entrepreneurs and freelance experts. Uh, in the middle of that, uh, we are the trustworthy platform, or we create the trust to the entrepreneurs to uh, make the payment. Uh, to an unknown person or to our platform and after that we just provide services through our experts to them so how would you plan to expand this beyond bangladesh because at the moment it's more focused on bangladesh right uh, right uh still now we are hyper localized on bangladesh uh, we are hyper focused on bangladesh but uh in 2024 we are uh, going to move it uh, globally uh, actually uh, right now we have some global clients and uh, in bangladesh it's very much uh, it's very much common that the bangladeshi agency has a uh, client from the global part so as a platform we have also global clients and uh, in, uh, just because of we are focusing on bangladeshi market that's why we are uh, not getting global clients so much but uh, in 2024 as we will be focused on the global market so i think we will uh, get them so how will you market um you know more extensively are you going to start off marketing more in asia and how would you do that Okay, uh, we are going to uh, work it through our uh, web platforms and social media and other platforms. And we will also, uh, uh, there are uh, there are some go-to-market plans. Uh, we'll uh, recruit some business associates and uh, we'll recruit some, our, uh, you, can, you can say that uh, business associates or agents are in different countries. And we will also uh, expand it digitally or uh, using the other digital marketing uh, strategies and tools. Right, right. So what's your vision for, say, five years' time for where you would say, hello, Biza? Okay, in one line or one sentence, I can say, uh, hello, Biza will be the most reliable platform for the SME entrepreneurs to grow their business digitally. It's our vision. Right, and that involves internationally, right? Not just Bangladesh, or right? Yeah, uh, it's globally, not uh, only in Bangladesh. Right, right. So, do you think there's particular challenges that Bangladeshi SMEs face when when they're actually doing business when they're I looking think, for digital I services? Think... I think while uh, Bangladeshi SME entrepreneurs doing their business, they face some challenges. Challenges uh, still uh, right now. They are facing challenges from the lack of knowledge about digital business and lack of funds. Also, I think this uh, these two are the main challenges our SME entrepreneurs are facing right now: knowledge and funds. Right. Right. And Farooq, what do you think the main challenges that you're facing are right now in your industry? Is the main challenges is the fund because I this is a common theme the funds right (laughs) (laughs) the main challenge is fund because uh, I was uh, is a fund I was tried to the some my district also in intercity connection because all now I five district and six districts I was uh, including but. I, my country is a 64 districts. So 64 districts, I include my service. So then uh, we need mainly a fund 
fund is the main things. So fund is not, is business is not. Mm. It's possible. So are you planning to do any fundraising in the next few months? Yes, I for fundraising next two months. Also, I was a aviation festival uh, Americas is a uh, Miami, Florida. I was participate uh, is um, uh, May 15 and 16, 2024 or 24. I was also going in there as a startup. So I was a something model, also financial statement, also like some other things I was ready for as a report, also submitting here and waiting for the visa for US embassy. And the, uh, next, after I think uh, we can success as a air taxi, as fundraising. So do you face much competition in your sector in um, Bangladesh? Is it, is it, are there other people trying to do what you're doing, Farouk? No, is a main is a not challenge. Uh, I think so, but other things uh, because there are already some big businessmen. They are subsidiary is a business in here. I also for me and another people's our founders. They are try to the convincing is a commercially you have to try this. Then uh, this develop. So because. Uh, Last two years ago, you uh, do not uh, imagine for Bangladesh as possible for uh, helicopter service. Uh, everybody know, uh, doesn't uh, think because it is a, a new business, new business model for in here. As a uh, you you see as a uh, tourism tourism side, we are also developed because now is winter time. Winter time is a tourism tourism sector. We are trying to develop, so we are in, uh, we are also focusing in here. Uh, how we develop in here, like this. Right. So the you you don't face a lot of competition, but you do face operating challenges, and you and face funding challenges. challenges. Yeah. Funding challenges. Shapnil, how about you? I, I, you presumably have competition not just from people who are doing exactly what you would, you're doing, but presumably people who are a little bit similar who are maybe providing services in a less focused way, but services that SMEs might use. So how do you see your competitive landscape? Okay, actually, uh, there are a lot of competitor, indirect competitors and uh, they are providing the same services in other model, like, uh, but they are not one is top. Uh, we are, uh, we, our main strength is we are focusing and we are offering one is top solution. Uh, we're talking to, we're telling the entrepreneurs to come here and get all the services what you need to grow your business. So it's our strength and we are offering continuous support and we are uh, providing them uh, very much budget friendly uh, price uh, and very standard quality services. And uh, that's the other competitors or indirect competitors can meet that. And there are some giant competitors, indirect competitors, but they are providing services very high scale or top notch price. So they, I think they are not our competitors in, in the sense of price war. So uh, there's uh, not so much complicated to us to uh, beat them. Right, right. And how do you differentiate yourselves in the marketplace from them? Okay, it's a very good question because uh, uh, in, in one sense, you can think or uh, anyone who uh, listens to the idea can think that it's a mar formal marketplace like Fiverr, Upwork or other things. Mm -hmm. But uh, we are different from them as we are not connecting the sellers or service providers to the entrepreneurs directly. Like uh, if you uh, go for uh, Fiverr or if you go for uh, Upwork, you can uh, know the name of the uh, seller or you can directly chat with the seller. But here we have deployed or here we had implemented an idea that a communicator system. So we are the middleman and we have communicated both of them. And there are some digital and uh, techni technological advancement system that, that is uh, communicating with both of these parties and maintain this. Uh, that doesn't directly connect the seller or the service provider or expert to the SME entrepreneurs. So you regard your service as value added because you're really standing in the middle to make Actually, sure that right, you right, understand right, right. what not, people not want. For that, yeah. not, uh, not for that, like uh, 
uh, if the sale are connected with the uh, SME entrepreneur, uh, uh, after that, they will go, uh, go from my platform and they will uh, give and uh, take the services personally. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, apart from that, we are uh, doing that for uh, assuring the quality. And for quality assurance, we are doing for, we are doing that. Right. I suppose, in theory at least, there should be more matching because you're making sure that the vendor knows, understands what is required and you're making sure that it's properly explained what is required, right? And the, and the vendor or the experts should be registered here and uh, they have to uh, give some test to register here and we are very much concerned about our service quality. Right, right, right. So um, when, when do you plan to launch an app for this or are you always going to make it mainly online in terms of a website? Uh, okay, uh, you know, in uh, we are high, uh, hyper focused on Bangladesh right now. So in Bangladesh, uh, the people, uh, SME entrepreneurs, are still uh, used to with the social media to communicate with uh, or taking any services from anyone. So mainly, uh, the Bangladeshi entrepreneurs are connecting with us through social media, and uh, some uh, people who are advanced, they are connecting with us through uh, our web application. But uh, very soon, when we expand it global, when we will expand it globally, we will launch our app, our mobile application to connect both of them. So in Bangladesh, they don't use apps so much. Is that right? Uh, no, no, no. It's not right. But in our sector, it's not common to use a app to take the services. From the social thing. media, like uh, Facebook right, or right. which ones? Uh, Facebook. Uh, main, mainstream social media here is Facebook. And mm -hmm. it's the most popular uh, social media. And uh, around uh, 40 million uh, or 40.3 million people are using, uh, 43 million people are using Facebook here. Wow, that's an amazing penetration, isn't it? <laughs> okay. Yeah. And Farouk, how about you? You know, in terms of your online people, a lot of people must find you online, right? So how do you manage that part of your business? Can you book online or how does it work? Online is is not for now. We are trying to the app developing last mm -hmm. two, three months, but we are basically direct phone calls or other links to the travel agent. Oh, and also for coming in Bangladesh passengers, we are also like marketing policy. That's a main main part of the uh, my customer find out. So my air taxi is main basic things. We are try to the online system. So go to the online apps. We are developed for the last uh, two three months for the app systems. So we are try to the developing because you know is a partnership and also for collaboration and so uh, government agency we are make for each for uh, same line things so we are try to the online apps so waiting for some two three months right right so would it be website or app or both uh, we have a website but yeah. uh, uh, but uh, we are a target for the customer uh, for direct phone calls. Right, right. So do you do that 24-7, the phone calls, or how does that work? It's a phone call. Uh, we have a customer service uh, options. We are con uh, we are a man management for the which area for customer need to the service uh, and also for the uh, some uh, civil aviation requirement. We are fill up and also for our security, safety security uh, purpose. We are main basic things so we are looking for that is the safety secret purpose because uh, as a peak point to down point uh, we are uh, taking out for a passenger or carry out for passenger looking for safety and also for area basis for the people not for crowding there because everybody excited for the uh, ride joy riding as uh, we talk about this um, so we are look uh, very much tough things for the safety side. Right, right. And what percentage of what you're doing is commercial in terms of perhaps delivering something as opposed to passengers? Is a commission basis. So we are trying to the 10% to 11, 12% is the main things we are, uh, because it's measurement for everything as a fuel consumption, also for a third party vendor like uh, and service providing things. We are measurement. Right, right. 
So, um, Shabnil, in terms of the types of SMEs you have, you must have access to quite a lot of data, which must be quite valuable in itself, all the data you have about SMEs on your platform. What sort of industries are they in? How does it break down? Uh, it's, it's a very much complicated question as there are uh, various uh, as there are various types or various times or various in from their various industries so uh, like from fashion industry like from like from uh, technology industry like from uh, service industry from various part of industry they are coming to us and get services from us and uh, it's not fixed or we are not fixed for a industry no, so, I just wondered and, and what kind of people up to now, what kind of SMEs have been made? You know, is there, is there any particular group that seem more prominent at the moment than others? Any particular sorts of industries? Sorry, I couldn't get it. Which industries do you think are more prevalent amongst your SME customers at the moment? Uh, I think it's uh, the clothing industry. Clothing, of course, the big, the big industry of Bangladesh. It's very, very popular. <laughs> right. It's very, very popular here. Yes, yes, very interesting. And, yeah, I can imagine. And uh, um, when the when the e-commerce industry is starting here, uh, and uh, it, it was a trend that uh, if you start an online business, you will start with a dress or something like that, something from clothing. So uh, now it's uh, now it's uh, separated or now it's uh, changing. But uh, it was a trend. Of course. So I suppose actually now you mentioned that a lot of other SME activity must grow out of people's experience in the clothing industry, right? All right. Yeah, yeah, that, that's kind of interesting. So just to, uh, I think we've been talking already for quite a long time and it's now around about time to wrap up. So Farouk, where would you see your business in five years time in a perfect world? Our main focus target is the global market leaders as we are taxing. That's one sentence like this. After five years, we are trying the global market. One of the most, most leaders we are uh, talking about everybody. Right. Thank you. And Shapnil, what about you? Uh, if I say qualitatively, uh, if I say qualitatively, I would say Hello Visa will serve globally in the next five years and uh, will be the most reliable platform for the SME entrepreneurs. And if I share the numbers, uh, then uh, more than two million SME entrepreneurs will be benefited from us, and uh, more than two lakh experts or freelance experts will be connected with us. That's our uh, vision or that's our goal for the next five years. Well, I can certainly see that Bangladesh um, is not lacking in ambition. I can certainly see that from this conversation. Thank you so much. Well, it was so interesting, both of you, for your insights. And, um, you know, the, clearly there's challenges for startups in Bangladesh, um, access to capital. But that, to be honest, that's a problem everywhere. Um, infrastructure, of course, is always a problem in, in many places. Um, I hope that, you know, the Commonwealth can help with cross-border funding um, and perhaps on Shopnil's platform, um, we, they, there could be some perhaps funding experts and uh, um, investment banks who may be able to join that platform, although there might be regulatory issues with that. So we need to think about that carefully. Um, and mentoring might be another thing that could come from some Commonwealth connections and um you know, some access to incubators and resources, university collaborations, perhaps um, pitching showcase platforms for your startups. And I hope that by leveraging, leveraging experience and networks, so the Commonwealth can help a bit, including the Commonwealth Chamber for that kind of startup potential. And in terms of aviation, I mean, clearly that is a regulated and complicated industry with quite high barriers to entry. And obviously, Farouk's own background in that industry is a major factor in, in the air taxi startup. But that's a very exciting story about growth and innovation and entrepreneurship and the, available, the availability of opportunities in Bangladesh. And I'd just like to remind everybody who's joined that by 2026, Bangladesh will have the youngest population in Asia with over 150 million people under the age of 25, which is staggering. And this huge youth workforce provides the potential for a demographic dividend and it'll be crucial for continued economic expansion. 
So industries like aviation and technology um, are clearly going to create employment that engages this talent. And I think we've heard a bit about the government's focus on infrastructure and um, it, its aim to make the whole of Bangladesh digital by 2040, boosting digital skills and incentivizing startups. And clearly that is important for a business friendly environment. There's also major projects underway to improve connectivity, um, both physically and virtually. And Hello Beza is obviously doing a wonderful job helping SMEs um, with their digital transformation and access to services. So I'm sure that Bangladesh is a good market um, for investors and it has, has strong fundamentals like low costs, high growth projections, young population, um, and both domestic ventures and multinational partnerships would clearly have a lot of potential for returns. So I'd like to thank our great speakers so much today for sharing so much of their perspectives and insights and their own perspectives on their entrepreneurial journeys in Bangladesh. And um, I hope you all are inspired as I am by the immense potential of this vibrant market. So please feel free to connect with our speakers. Um, I will put their um, details online on our website. I'm sure that they would be very pleased to continue any conversations with you. And I'd like to also thank the Global Council of Startups in Bangladesh for helping us with this collaboration. It's been a privilege to host such pioneering entrepreneurs from their network. And I look forward to our ongoing partnership and bringing more of these impactful um, webinars to everybody across the world. So clearly the entrepreneurial spirit is thriving in Bangladesh and we'll continue to explore these opportunities. So thank you everybody who joined us today. Thank you, Farouk. Thank you, Shop Neil. Thank you. Thank you, everybody else. And goodbye, everybody.